Good afternoon, everybody. It's Dr. Galvin with today's coronavirus update. So, boy, what a difference today makes, huh? Um, I posted a, re a review, rebuttal, to a very popular video yesterday, and boy, our YouTube channel certainly blew up. <sighs> a lot of nasty comments there, a lot of positive comments, and a lot of positive messages sent to me. But boy, I guess people don't really like civil discourse in this country, judging from the, uh, the hate and vitriol that was thrown around on that thread. So we're going to talk about that video again today. Today's part two. But before we get there, I guess I should. So you guys have plenty of ammunition. I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Jeffrey Galvin. I'm an MD. I'm board certified in emergency medicine and in obesity medicine. I've been practicing emergency medicine for about 25 years and I still practice emergency medicine. But about 10 years ago, I started a performance functional medicine clinic based on my frustration with the fact that you know traditional medicine just treats symptoms and I thought there was a better way to do it. So at my clinic, we focus on root causes and we look to optimize nutrition, fitness, sleep, stress, hormones, all kinds of things to improve human performance. So is this a show for my clinic? Well, you know, do I want people to come to my clinic? Yeah, so if you're interested and you wanna come talk to me, great. If you are if you're just wanna hear about the coronavirus, that's really what this is here for. I started these videos on March 15th, I think, after working in an emergency department shift and getting off and seeing all these comments and a lot of confusion about the virus. And so I started posting a daily update where I kind of go through the numbers and answer people's questions and we've been doing that daily for a long time. Apparently the video yesterday hit a nerve. Before we get on to the second part of that, I do want to make a, a statement. I served in the military, I was a major in the Air Force, served as an emergency physician, and you know I consider myself a patriot. And the fact that this particular video that we're talking about has been censored and keeps getting taken down, I, I think is wrong. We have a constitutional right to free speech and people need to be able to make their own minds up. And so look at this video, look at that video, do your own research, do your own fact checking, but taking things down, uh, I, I'm against, and I don't think that we should just randomly censor ideas. Plus, this is the internet. Has anybody not been able to find that video if they really want it? I mean, it takes two seconds with Google. So my feeling is YouTube should leave it up, if they want to put a disclaimer on it, fine, but let people make up their own minds. Now, on to the topic of the day, this video that we talked about. First of all, I want to make some clarifications. Boy, people beat me up like crazy yesterday. Now, I want to say that I got a ton of positive feedback, many messages, many calls and texts and, and messages uh, on different platforms, so I appreciate that. Thank you very much. I do want to clarify. I never said that the woman was an anti-vaxxer. What I said was she's a darling of the anti-vaxxers. And again, since people want proof and solid proof, I'm gonna give you that proof. Let's remember, they are using this video to sell her book. I don't think that we can argue that that's not going on. The book was published by Skyhorse Publica Publications, which is owned by Tom Lyons, who clearly states the mission of his uh, publishing company is to reveal the link between autism and vaccines. So he's an anti-vaxxer by definition. Her co-author self-describes himself as the world's number one anti-vaxxer. Those aren't my words, those are his, and they're in her book, so please fact check it, look it up. Finally, the forward is by Robert F. Kennedy, who runs a prominent anti-vaccine group. So. Again, I didn't say that she was an anti-vaxxer, I said that she was liked by them, and certainly her publisher, her co-author, and the person who wrote her forward are all prominent anti-vaxxers. I'm not, that, that's all I'm gonna say about that. Secondly, I, you know, people have, have yelled at me for calling out the Bakersfield docs, and I've talked about them in a different video, how, they, how those numbers that they came up with are completely wrong, and it's well agreed upon, but I will say that the video has edited that in a very provocative way, and certainly what I said the doctor said was true as the, the, the video was edited, but people pointed out in the full video, he does say that he heard this from other people. Now, I'm a practicing ER doctor. I work in the emergency department. I've seen these cases. I work with a bunch of other ER doctors. I have friends who are ER doctors, and none of them are telling me that we're being rushed or forced to put COVID down as a diagnosis. It's not happening. Again, it's my experience versus what he's heard from his friends. 
We could both be right, but I'm saying that my own experience, personal from working at the front lines with these patients, I'm not being told to do that. So let's go on and talk about some of the other points that were brought up in the video. One of them is about hydroxychloroquine. And you know, she rightly says it's been an essential medicine for 70 years. And it's been essential to treat malaria, to treat rheumatoid arthritis, to treat lupus. It absolutely has been uh, an important drug. What's implied by the way the video is edited is that it's also been used for all this time as an antiviral against coronaviruses, and that's just not true. There are plenty of studies going on right now looking at whether hydroxychloroquine in particular combined with, with zinc, and I've got a, a supplement recommendation sheet that I send out to people for free, and we actually, in that sheet, recommend quercetin and zinc for the same reason. Both hydroxychloroquine and quercetin are onophores, and they help get zinc into the cells. Zinc disrupts viral replicase, and we think can prevent viral infections. It, it's, it, it works based on the, the models. There, I don't know if there's been any studies on it. It's what I take, what I'm having my, my patients take. Hydrochloroquine may work in a similar fashion. Now, there's been studies and the results have been mixed. There have been some that have shown benefit, there have been some that have shown that it doesn't help, and there are some that have shown that in high doses it causes QT prolongation and can kill people. So the jury's out, there's a lot of ongoing studies. I can tell you that we use it in my hospital, in the combination of zinc, hydroxychloroquine, sometimes IV vitamin C, and azithromycin, the inpatient protocol, my understanding at our hospital has removed azithromycin because it hasn't really been shown to be effective. This is a new virus. We don't know much about it. What we are learning is, is changing every day. A month and a half ago, if you came in in respiratory distress, I would, put an in, I would intubate you and put a breathing tube down because that's the right thing to do for everything else. What do we know now? It's not the right thing to do. And if I do that, your chance of dying is 80%. If I can somehow manage to keep you alive without putting a tube in you, your chance of survival is much, much higher. Did we know that a month and a half ago? No. How do we learn that? We learn that by talking amongst ourselves, emergency doctors, critical care doctors, sharing things. There's actually a, a video clip from uh, on the video of a, a critical care doctor who I think did us all a great service by coming to bring some of these things to light. So look it up. Hydroxychloroquine is not a cure. It may help. We really want to make sure we don't hurt people by causing fatal arrhythmias but the jury is out. The next thing is this claim that the flu vaccine increases your risk of getting COVID-19 by 36%. And that is not true. The study that they cite looked at active duty military people and immunization rates, and they were looking at whether they were at a higher risk of developing other infections as a result of their immunization. And what they found was if you look at their conclusions, they actually say it's not really significant, but they did find in one of their tables that the risk of that there was, some, there was a higher risk of coronavirus co-infection if you had, had immunization against influenza. Now, that's not COVID-19. Coronavirus that they're talking about is the one that causes the common cold. Are they in the same family of viruses? Yeah, they are. Are they the same thing? No, they're not. A Great Dane and a Chihuahua are both in the dog family. Are they the same? No, they're not. Furthermore, if you look a little deeper, and I actually read both of these papers, there was another paper that came out um, a year or two ago that looked at similar question over six flu seasons, and they did not demonstrate any increased risk of developing other viruses as a result of immunization from uh, against influenza. The next thing is this business of, of us killing our immune systems by staying home. And I think that that is not true. And why do I say that? And again, I'm gonna encourage you to go look it up because unless you live in a hermetically sealed bubble, we have bacteria in our houses, in our yards, outside of our houses, we have viruses. Our immune system is still getting challenged. When we go outside and, and walk around the, the world, our immune system gets challenged and we respond to it. I tell our patients, let your kids eat dirt. Why would I say that? Because the bacteria, strengthen our immune system, they strengthen the gut. However, wearing a mask is not gonna significantly change that. Let's think about when we're, when we're asking people to wear masks. When you go to the grocery store, when you go to Lowe's, we're not saying sit home on, with a mask all day long or when you're out in your yard, just if you're in close proximity to other people. Why would we say that? 
it's not about protecting you from getting the virus. It's pr protecting other people from catching it from you. The, the one of the insidious things about this virus is that many people are either going to have no symptoms or they're going to have a five to seven day period where they're completely asymptomatic, yet they're shedding the virus, meaning they can give it to other people. And we know that your risk of dying this virus is very low if you're young and healthy and potentially very high if you're old and you have, and you're, and you have underlying medical problems. So I, as a good human being, do not want to inadvertently expose somebody that might die from this by going to the grocery store. So I put a mask on hoping that maybe I'm gonna keep a little bit of the spread of my own fomites containing the virus from going elsewhere and infecting somebody else. Now, I walk into that, that supermarket, I get what I want, I go back out, where was I? I was in there for 10 minutes or so and I take the mask off. You know, most people are staying home, so not wearing a mask every day. So at the most, people are wearing masks for, for short periods of time. Now, when I go to work, I wear an N95 mask, which actually does filter everything out for the whole shift, because you know what? I'm, t I'm treating patients with this disease, and if I don't do that, I'm gonna get sick, and I'm gonna bring it home and, and sicken my family. So our immune systems are not being significantly compromised by being home, as long as you're are, are, are around life, outside the you know dirt whatever there's bacteria in your house you're still challenging your immune system so th that that statement is not true and again don't trust me go look it up the next thing is the things about Fauci and I'm not going to get into what she says Fauci did or didn't do I mean they clearly going back they, they have a, 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 a they have a, a tough relationship those two do not like each other I wasn't there, I can't speak to what the conversation was, whether it's true or not. It's hearsay on her part saying that, that he, he said it and it would be hearsay on my part to say that he didn't because nobody was there and nobody can say. But what I can address is the edit of the video where they quote Fauci saying um, something along the lines of, oh, there's no doubt there will be a surprise outbreak in the future. And somehow I think that's made to say that he was prescient and he, he kind of planned this. And I think it's, it's a, an editing trick. That's not something that, that Tony Fauci came up with. That is something that scientists have been saying and warning about for years and years. Not only scientists, but science fiction authors. And, and you know, th that's been a common theme. And we've always been worried about another pandemic like the Spanish flu of 1918. Why do we worry about these things? Because SARS came out and was very, very deadly. MERS came out and was very, very deadly. If the, the COVID, if the, the uh, SARS-CoV-2 was as deadly as, as those two, we would really be in a hard spot. But we're lucky that it's much less deadly, although it's still deadly. Remember, social distancing was not to prevent people from getting the virus. Social distancing was to keep the system from getting overwhelmed. We were not ready a month and a half, two months ago for this. Now we are. Hospitals are empty because people are afraid to go there. The only people we're seeing are COVID patients and deathly ill people. As we open up society, and if you go back and look at my videos, I've talked about Sweden, I've talked about my belief that we should be opening up in a smart way to do it in a way that gets people back to work as quickly as possible while protecting the most vulnerable and helping us achieve herd immunity as fast as possible. It needs to be done intelligently. We need to test people. We need to know what's going on. We need to know where the outbreaks are. And my other belief is that this has to be a very local process. What we might implement in my semi-rural area of North Carolina is probably not the right answer for where my in-laws live in the Bronx. Nor is it the right answer for folks that live you know, 10 miles away in Charlotte. I think we need to be able to look at things on a local basis and say, okay, this, is, this area, we need to loosen things up a little bit more. In these other areas, we need to tighten things up. We need to be testing, 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 so we get a sense of where the virus is and what the numbers really look like because the lack of testing really handicaps us. And then we need to be smart about releasing restrictions as needed and then if things get out of hand, to start pulling back in. And again, I'm a humbled ER doctor. I promise you I've not been paid by Bill Gates or Big Pharma or, or anybody else. Nobody's paying me to do these videos. If you don't believe that, go back and look at the, the whole, the months and months of, of videos that I've done. I, I don't think it shows a huge agenda one way or the other. Again, let the flame wars begin. Uh, I, I guess I'm, my skin is getting a little thick now. I'm an ER doctor. I have thick skin to begin with. Thank you for those that have been supportive. 
trying to give another perspective and trying to give a little bit of, of sanity to the madness out there. Everybody, take a deep breath. We are all gonna survive this. We're gonna get through it. Let's have some civil discourse out there. You know, this is a civil society. We need to be able to learn how to talk to each other. As I always say, wash your hands, take care of yourselves, take care of your families, look out for those around you. If you find this is valuable, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit the little bell to subscribe. And also you can like us or follow us on Facebook. I'll be back tomorrow with a regular, hopefully much less controversial uh, coronavirus update. For now, good night, have a great evening.